Hello one and all and welcome to Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Yes, today sees the return of the ever popular Flat Earth Fail compilation, episode four to be precise. In these particular videos, I get three or four videos made by Flat Earthers and lump them all together into bite-sized chunks of scientific failure. Special thanks goes out to my patrons on this one. We had a hangout and some of them helped me choose some of the videos we're gonna look at today. If you'd like to get involved in the Patreon stuff, I'll leave a link in the description. Okay, back to today's video. The first one is by Flat Max UK, who's got it in his head that the solstice and seasons prove a close sun. Let's hear him out. Right, I'm fairly happy with that so far. Looking very good, he's even using a diagram. Is actually quite a good video. Why did I pick it? Seriously, we may have to stop this one. Nothing to debunk so far. Okay, so Max is saying there are 3,000 miles or so between the two points, okay? Our survey said... No, 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 no. The heliocentric model, let's call that real life, does not attribute that to the change in temperature or seasons. Nowhere does it ever say that. Max, Max, you are comparing the difference in temperatures of seasons on a planet orbiting the sun between 147 and 152 million kilometers to the difference in temperature of your hand next to a cup of tea from pretty much zero to what, 10 centimeters? That is literally the worst comparison I've ever seen. And I've seen a lot. Oh, come on.
So what does that tell you about the theory that being close to the sun is the main reason why the temperature change happens? It tells you it's a load of old cod's wallop. Yes, Max, because the reason for that temperature change is not the distance. It's the angle at which the sun's radiation hits the Earth. Here in the UK, in midsummer, the sun is at 62 degrees. In winter, it's only 16 degrees. More radiation per square kilometre. Simple as that. Let's move on to our next failure. This one is from YouTuber Lord Stephen Christ Mercury, who has some interesting ideas. Hello people, Steve aka Bob Ross Christ here, I'm just going to tell you a little information about the concavity, concavity of the oit, concavity of the earth, okay? As I mentioned before in my previous videos, you are living on the inside surface, so these are like continents, you know? Put some continents over here, maybe this is like North America. And then you got ocean, ocean is on the inside of the earth, guys. Yes, Stephen is a concave earther. Not flat earth specific, but still a fail nonetheless. Let's carry on and see where his interesting ideas lead us. Continents and oceans on the inside, wow. That's how tides work, it's all pressure. So this relieves the pressure, this is the sun. Sun actually has a back flex, flat side. Believe it or not, the back of the sun is flat and dark. I've seen it in a vision. I know what I'm talking about, okay? Oh, he's seen it in a vision, right. In the earth, okay? Well, let's put the glass sky. Gotta put the glass sky. There's a glass sky. I kid you not, there is a glass sky, the common line. Come on, come on, 100 kilometers high, formed after the flood. This is the celestial sphere. There is actually water above. Then in the middle, of course, you got the Pyramida, Pyramida, Pyramid. This is the apex. Father of Lights. So hang on, there's a load of glass 100 kilometers up, then more water, then a giant pyramid. Right. Remember James 1, 17? Father of Lights. Father of Lights extends its light to the sun. The sun is wrapping around in a cylindrical path. This is from a top view, so actually it was, a, it was if the sun was here on like a side view, it would be going cylindrically. That's how you get the season, guys. Six months here, six months there. Back, back and forth, up and down. Celestial sphere tilts. That's how we get the precession. There's a magnetic north pole stemming from the vertical magnetic shaft of the pyramid. That's why it moves. That's why the magno magnetic north pole moves. Because the whole celestial sphere is slowly wobbling over 1,000 years, not 26,000. So why doesn't the North Star position change in a 1,000 year cycle then? I'm already done with this. No evidence, a visions and a drawing. Puh. Next. Hello, Flat Earth researchers, debaters and debunkers. Oh no, not Phuket word again. Can't get rid of this guy. Here's a little thought experiment and some real physics to just think about what we are told to believe when it comes to the globe Earth. There's the sun, okay, and uh, we are told that uh, the Earth rotates to make the sun set. So I've got the I've got a little table here, all right, and there's a there's a can here. Um, so what happens when the Earth uh, tilts so that we see a sunset? Oh dear! Oh dear, indeed. This has to be one of the most feeble, unorganised and downright deceitful experiments I've ever seen. However, I am intrigued, so let's see more. 
Oh dear. Oh, and oh, there's the sunrise because the earth is coming back round again. Yeah? <laughs> is he trolling? He has to be trolling, right? Seem crazy? Seem stupid? Yeah? Just think about it. Just think about what happens the moment something tilts. Yeah? Okay? It's physically impossible for us to be on a spinning ball earth. It's physically impossible to represent the earth as a table and then tilt that table to simulate a sunrise and a sunset and then think that that's a good analogy for it. Physically impossible. There must be another reason for this. So forget about all those arguments about horizons and alleged drop and air pressure and gradients and Coriolis and atmosphere sticking to the earth and all that stuff and angles and blah blah blah. Yeah, the simple fact is that things like the physics of water, which must be contained, and if it is tilted, will, will demonstrate that tilt. If it's not contained, it will flow. And if it's on a moving earth, then it will, <laughs> it will also move. Yeah, this is real physics, folks. Yeah. Oh! I've got it. He's working for the globe side, trying to discredit flat earthers. Has to be, no other explanation. Right, our final video sees us popping in on YouTuber Lifting the Lid, who has a video entitled Flat Earth Challenge for All Scientists. Let's see where this goes.
Oh, oh, I want to be on that hall of shame. I'll apply and let all you guys know how I get on. Well, that about wraps it up for another Flat Earth Friday. Thank you all for watching. Before we finish, I've just got time to mention a fabulous recent interview conducted by channel Fight the Flat Earth, who conducted an interview with a former Flat Earther. It's a very, very good insight. You should take a look. I'll leave a link in the description. My name has been Simon Dan. Please, please do leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Even hit the bell if you want to. And I'll see you all on Tuesday where we'll finally be looking at chemtrails. Until then.